Seven and a half million American students, or roughly 15% of them, have disabilities that qualify them for special instruction, what's known as individual education plans. But teachers trained in this critical area are in short supply. At the beginning of the current school year, 70% of schools surveyed said they had openings for special education teachers. We asked special education teachers and administrators to tell us how the shortage is affecting them. You're spread thin, you know, and you're working with a student on a lesson to meet their academic goals, but you're also thinking about the student behind you who's working on maybe feeding or they're getting their medications and you're thinking, how can I support that student when I'm working with another student? My name is Mary Ellen Robinson. I am a special education teacher for students who have complex support needs in Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Sarah Davis. I'm a special education teacher in Minnesota and I teach um, emotional and behavioral disorders. They have gone so far as to reach out to a temp agency to bring in paraeducators, which it helps having bodies in the building, but it's not the same as having a teacher who is you know, trained and has specialized in behaviors and mental health. My name is Amy Olette. I'm in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. I'm a retired school teacher. I'm Nadine Stein, Assistant Superintendent for Pupil Services for the Waltham Public Schools in Waltham, Massachusetts. It breaks your heart every single day as a teacher to know that you still needed more time with a student. And not only does it break your heart, but I could cry every single day worrying about the kids and that they need more time. I always have big box Kleenex in my office. It's part of my job. Um, but usually when someone is upset about something, we can work together and we can figure out a solution that is going to benefit people and we can, we can move forward. This year, I don't have a solution because I don't have people. The staffing shortage really makes me question if it, I want to spend the rest of my career in this setting. It makes me feel so sad knowing that there's such a shortage of people who want to go into this field and working with students like my own. I really loved really working with those kids who were struggling, building that relationship and helping them see that, hey, this is a positive thing and we can, I can help you through this. And then those successes, even though they feel very small, are huge for those students. We got to do a very much better job celebrating these people and thanking them and supporting them because I, I don't want them to leave. Let's get past this bump. And, you know, with always the hope that it's, it's got to get better next year. It has to get better. The voices of special education teachers and administrators. Kimber Wilkerson is a professor of special education at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Kimber, we heard in that tape some of them talk about the, the burnout factor, that they are just so frazzled from all they have to do. How big a factor is that in the shortage? I think the job of being a special educator is a, a meaningful job that provides a lot of satisfaction, but the stresses and the pressures on teachers in schools right now um, are, they are real. So it definitely contributes to people leaving their jobs faster than they might have in the past. So in addition to that sort of burnout because of all they have to do, what are the other factors that there are behind this shortage? You know, overall, in the last 10 years or so, there's been kind of an increase in this shortage of educators, and that's across the board. But special education has always been hit sort of the hardest of all the education professions ever since it became a thing in the 70s. And so I'd say over the last 10 years or so, there's been kind of an erosion in the public's view of teaching as a desirable profession, maybe some erosion of benefits and autonomy that teachers experience. So those things combine to create a public narrative that makes teaching and maybe special education less desirable than it was in the past. Now, federal law guarantees students with disabilities an appropriate public education. How is the shortage affecting that? The shortage of special educators has an impact on the quality of services that students with disabilities receive. Obviously, when um, special educators are spread more thin, so maybe in a school where there used to be three special educators for the middle school band, and now we're down an educator, and so you have two or sometimes even one special educator who's now serving that whole population, of course, that person's caseload is going to be higher. And the amount of individual attention that they're going to be able to give 
to specific students is decreased. What are some of the things that schools are doing to try to bridge this gap, to bridge the shortage? Schools and states have been sort of forced to be as creative as possible. In some cases, they're making it easier to become a special educator or a teacher. I don't personally think those are the best um, solutions because what it tends to do is bring in people who are less qualified and that less quality of preparation makes them burn out even faster and provide you know, more poor quality services to kids. Um, but there are some really creative solutions in terms of trying to provide supports to career changers or people who work in schools already. Some of these are called grow your own programs where they might take special education paraprofessionals and provide them with the education that they need to be certified. And these are individuals who've already been working with students with disabilities and already have kind of a commitment to that school community. What should be done or what can be done to resolve this problem? There are some efforts in different states to increase pay for teachers to try to make the work worth the effort. And there are also initiatives aimed at providing more professional development, more supports to be able to decrease caseloads. And I think that the, the awareness of the problem and all the kind of creative solutions that, that universities and school districts and states are employing right now will likely and hopefully uh, pay off in the coming years. Now, I believe you were a special educator, and I believe your daughter is a special educator. Talk about why this role is so important, why having special educators is so important. I'd say from my own perspective, it was a really impactful and meaningful career choice where I could see like sort of the my efforts paying off right in front of my eyes and um, uh, investing in students who other people have kind of written off. Um, my own daughter decided to go into special education. She is actually an early career special educator in her fourth year. You know, she feels pressures and she feels stretched thin and um, she sometimes leans on me for ideas and support. And I wish that more districts could provide more support to those early educators um, to help prevent them from getting burnt out and providing more support might be opportunities for those veteran or experienced educators to, to have some additional sort of impacts in their own buildings as well. I'm curious what advice you had for your daughter or what advice you would have for any young person who's thinking of getting into this. I'd say the thing that I try to stress the most is to remember why you got into it in the first place. Um, usually when people go into special education, they have, a, again, a desire to kind of uh, invest in young people and um, try to help them achieve outcomes that other people might have decided they they're not going to be able to achieve, and to be an advocate for families. Kimber Wilkerson from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Thanks very much. Thank you.